Build thee an ark of wood. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him. The history of man and the sea is long and filled with tradition. Traveling in crude canoes along the rivers cutting through the jungles of early civilization, men carried themselves to new places, to new ways of living. The shorelines they saw in the age of discovery have changed as much as their vessels. With the discovery of steam as a method of propulsion, the great sailing ships gave way to self-propelled craft. Some of the tradition was gone, but the spirit of these men lives on in Americans at Work. Seafaring men, carrying on a tradition as old as communication between nations, transporting across the seven seas the people and products of all lands. A luxury liner at the end of a transatlantic crossing lies offshore of a great port. Coming aboard are customs agents, health officers, and the harbor pilot. It is a typical scene at the mouth of any harbor. On the bridge, the harbor pilot will set the course for the men in the wheelhouse. He is there to guide the huge liner through waters he knows better than a bus driver knows his routes. The second mate translates his directions into action. On the engine telegraph, he sets the pointer for the power and direction required. Below, in the engine room, a similar telegraph repeats the message. As the engineer adjusts the power plants, he returns a signal to the bridge, notifying the officer that his order has been received and carried out. Standing by in the engine room are the engineers on watch keeping a constant check on the gauges that keep them informed of the engine's condition. Each time the telegraph signals, the engineer makes the corrections ordered. While the ship is still moving into the harbor channel, the radio officer is kept busy sending last-minute messages to the shore, announcing time of arrival and necessary ship's business. His sending key operates almost constantly, telling friends and relatives of passengers of the homecoming. When the radio man has finished sending, he's ready to receive. His headphones carry the code signals that answer requests sent out earlier and spell messages of welcome to passengers. In the main harbor, the tugboats, small, powerful craft, assist the liner in approaching the dock. At sea, though, there are no tugs to help guide her. All the navigation must be done aboard ship, where radar helps keep the captain informed of the whereabouts of other craft and approaching shores. Even in the harbor, the radar screen marks the path the ship can safely take. The magnetic compass, used for centuries to guide vessels across the trackless seas, is still found on the bridge of any ship. Without it, there would be no way to set and maintain a course. Safely into the harbor, the liner is ready to begin the docking operation. From a tug comes the docking pilot, a specialist in guiding huge ships into tight berths. From the bridge, he will direct the tugs. On the bridge wing, the first officer transmits signals from pilot to tug. The voyage is nearly over. The hearty tugs, churning the water, push the liner sideways to the dock. 
On the bridge, the captain, traditional master of the ship at sea, commands the operation. A line passed to the ship from the tug is made fast. The liner moves slowly to the dockside. On the decks below, sailors prepare the mooring lines, ready to heave them to the waiting dockhands. Finally, contact with the shore is secured as the gangways are hauled into position. Luggage collected from the staterooms is brought to the deck, carrying its owner's mementos of a holiday well spent. Down the gangplank lie home and friends and family. While passengers go ashore, ending their trip, eagerly looking forward to another sometime in the future, the people who have served them while on board go about their jobs, busily preparing staterooms and cabins for the return voyage to be made in a few days' time. While in port, all the ship's crew will be busy to make the new passenger's trip a pleasant one. During each day of the crossing, these same men and women will give personalized service to every traveler. Three meals a day for passengers and crew require large stocks of provisions. There can be no shortage because there is no way to replenish supplies a thousand miles at sea. When a ship stays in port for any length of time, the engineers are kept busy caring for their equipment. Valves and tubes and engines receive periodic checks and service. Safety inspections in port or at sea protect passengers and crew. Watertight doors between compartments open and close automatically, but men must make sure the controls operate correctly. There are many jobs to be done in preparation for a crossing. Floors must be cleaned and shining, just as every part of a ship is traditionally kept. The hull of a ship is always in contact with the salt water. In port, the paint crews are busy chipping away old paint and refinishing the steel of the hull. Hanging over the side on scaffolds, scrapers and painters apply their chipping hammers and brushes to the surface marred by the water. Exposure to salt air and water means a continuous maintenance program for the entire ship. Between crossings, staterooms are redecorated to keep the vessel looking fresh and new. When the passengers come aboard, everything will be ship shape. Safety at sea is an important part of every sailor's life. Regular drills are carried out for the emergency that probably never will happen. A ship at sea must be able to take care of any emergency including abandonment if necessary. Each man has a duty station and the drills teach him to act automatically. Getting the lifeboats overboard demands precision and training. During the lifeboat drills, the boats are lowered over the side. The men take their places and perform assigned tasks. The equipment aboard the boat must be checked for completeness and operation. In the locker, essential gear is stowed away. Life jackets, first aid kits, ropes, fuel, lights and lanterns, flares, fishing gear and emergency rations. When the passengers come aboard, they too will be assigned lifeboat stations and instructed in safety procedure. As the passengers come up the gangways, an adventure is beginning. Living aboard a floating community, 
miles from land in the greatest luxury. When the ship is ready, staterooms, salons, dining rooms and lounges cleaned and waiting, provisions stored and maintenance completed, the passengers come aboard. Just as in a modern hotel, they are taken to their stateroom by a bellboy. These are the people with whom most guests anywhere deal directly. The bellboys and stewards see to every want of the passengers, looking after their comfort and pleasure from sailing to arrival. that marks a departure, passengers take a last look at the shore and the people who've come to see them off. But while the passengers have nothing to do but enjoy the trip, the ship's crew and the harbor crews are busy moving the ship into the channel, preparing to make the journey a pleasant one. As the tugs move the giant vessel about, heading it out to sea, the crews move about in what may seem like confusion to the onlookers but they know their jobs and handle them quickly and efficiently, just as they have always done. During the Second World War, the men on the merchant ships carried troops and supplies to every corner of the globe. Today, they are the suppliers of peace, transporting people and products to all points of the compass. of America's maritime fleet, our commercial navy, our maritime workers of the AFL-CIO, men and women who provide a link between nations. Whether on freighters or tankers or luxury passenger ships, they are vital to America in peace and in conflict. It was the sea that led men to discover the world, to develop it, and at times to rule it. Today, the sea, and those who work on it bring the people of the world closer together. Americans at work for you. Americans at Work, presented as a public service by the AFL-CIO. Next week, another interesting story of Americans at Work. Americans whose skill and effort help keep our country great and strong. Music